Today I'm going to be taking a look at another one of my eBay finds. This is a PCIe card that's intended for an EMC Isilon system with two M SATA drives, likely for boot, and an Ethernet port, PCIe slot, and two more SATA ports on the back. And really there's not much on this in terms of chips. The back's almost empty, the front's almost empty except for this little chip here. So I was kind of curious how this all plugged in and what all is going on in this card. The first thing that I took a look at on this card was the SSDs. It has two 32GB M SATA SSDs. The performance is fine. It's perfectly good for a boot drive, but pretty bad compared to most other SSDs on the market. And upon taking out both these SSDs, I noticed there really doesn't seem to be much on this board at all. I can't see any SATA controllers that would drive these SSDs or anything. So the only thing I could come to the conclusion of after looking at a few traces on this board is that these M SATA slots are actually connected to the SATA ports on the back. So this is just a carrier for those M SATA drives. So if I set it into a system, I still need to plug in these SATA ports to drive it. And I plugged it into a system to confirm this. If I plug it into the system and plug these two ports in, it works fine and no PCIe devices show up on the system. The next question I had was, what is this ethernet port doing? It looks like a fairly normal little ethernet port. There's a little connector near it, likely data going to the ethernet port because all the traces seem to kind of be going between this little chip here, the connector and the ethernet port. And there doesn't appear to be any PCIe traces being used on this board. You can typically see the data traces from the PCIe slot going somewhere and I don't see any of those on this board. So I did a little bit of Googling on this chip that I saw here, and it's a Realtek RTL8211, which is a Ethernet PHY. And a little bit of Googling of how Ethernet works, the Ethernet PHY goes between the actual Ethernet jack and the Ethernet Mac. And the Ethernet MAC converts something like PCIe or USB to Ethernet signals, and this converts those Ethernet signals into something like a thousand base T, which is what runs in those Ethernet cables because an ethernet cable isn't raw ones and zeros. There's a lot of little processing going on that this little chip here does. A lot of the time though, it appears that this PHY chip is combined with the MAC or MAC chip. So then you only have one chip. So a lot of ethernet controllers, you see have one chip that connects directly between PCIe or USB and ethernet. But in this case, there's a second one. And this connector connects to something else that is giving ethernet data. I tried as hard as I could to find out what that is. And I looked at a lot of Google images and eBay listings of servers that had these parts in them. And I couldn't find anything that had a good enough picture to find out where the ribbon cable that would go into here actually went. My guess is it's some sort of management thing likely for the chassis. I believe the boards they were using had a IPMI management that could manage the stuff built into the board. I'm guessing this was to manage the parts of the chassis. This is not the type of network card that I'd expect a server to use for any amount of significant data transfer as it's not a very high quality NIC or high speed NIC. So from all that I can tell, this looks like a little PCB that they created so they can have their little network port accessible to the back of the system, have somewhere to mount their M SATA drives, and has a power source as well. One thing I happen to have is a older EMC Islon X200. I believe these cards were built for the newer X210 model. But on my X200, it used a different way of storing boot data. It used these tiny little SATA SSDs, likely because M SATA wasn't a thing when the server was made. It also had this little dual SATA adapter that would be mounted to the side of the chassis. It does make sense though why they switched to M SATA drives, as M SATA is a much common form factor than a very small SATA drive with no enclosure. So it isn't easier to get a replacement for it and likely cheaper to find too. Both of these drives are made by Smart, which I'm likely doing a lot of OEM sales because you don't see them on consumer markets. They seem to be reasonably high quality SSDs. And both of these that I have have very high amounts of hours, likely being on for about four or five years continuously, low amounts of power on cycles, and relatively little data. Exactly what I'd expect a boot drive to be doing. Overall, it's a relatively good eBay find. I like it that it's super plug and play. I can just take this, slot this into a system, put these M SATA SSDs in and then plug these SATA ports onto the motherboard and then I have a boot drive in a system. And it doesn't take up any of my precious front drives when I could otherwise put large storage drives in or high speed SSDs. This card would work fairly well for an OS like Proxmox or TrueNAS. They both need a relatively small boot drive with relatively low IO requirements and support software RAID 1. So if either of these cards fail, you can continue with just one of the drives until the second is replaced.
but with a lot of newer motherboards having M.2 slots on the board, it makes a lot more sense to me to use an M.2 slot if you already have one. But if you can get one of these really cheap on eBay, it's pretty good if you don't have an M.2 slot and want a little thing to hold some little SSDs that you can use as boot drives. Thanks for watching this video about one of my little eBay finds, and let me know if you have any idea where this connector goes to in those Isilon systems.